country, um, but I spent my adult life in uh, the city and, you know, as a creative and someone who um, wanders the city and, and is inspired by where she lives, um, increasingly interested in, in weird and, and um, decaying facades and the, sort of the palimpsest that I'd see on the, on the sides of buildings and and um, so thinking about, well, you know, why am I attracted to those kinds of things or maybe not something you would naturally think of. Um, but also because I do, you know, am drawn to a natural environment and, and thinking about, well, why are we so, you know, naturally, you know, interested in those organic shapes and so what's the kind of correlation. And, and as I drive, you know, north of the city and, and I see those sub suburban uh, developments, no offense to suburbanites, but, um, you know, totally reviled by them and thinking about, well, why... Is that so awful? And why is this, you know, appealing to me? And so, um, I think one of those, the things that I kind of came to was that the idea that, that those things, those um, suburban environments, are so perfectly, you know, right angled. There's no diversity. They're all the same. There's this sort of cookie color, uh, cookie cutter element to them. So, you know, back to this sort of idea of, um, you know, what do I find interesting in the city? Is that sort of when the right angles start to, to fray and and um, there's an, an age and a weathering, and it might seem like it's an imperfect kind of thing, but to me, I find it very aesthetically um, interesting and pleasing. And, and you know, you'd be surprised what you can find. And, and as the city, you know, does sort of change and alter and, and age, um, it's just to me that's sort of what, where I can find interesting um, inspiration. And, and so when I was on a trip recently in LA, and I was walking, and, and I saw this concrete wall, this this piece here, this this image rather. Um, and I just sort of liked the color and how simple it was, and, and I found it very elegant. Well, it's burnt shit. So, you know, you never know what you're going to, what you're going to see and what's going to inspire you. So, you know, there you go. It's burnt shit to Michael Snow. Sorry, Michael Snow. Um, it's this idea that um, this sort of fraying and, and, and fragmenting, but there's this pattern. And so um, to throw in the chaos theory part is this sort of idea that, that you know, in nature and in, certainly in this kind of context in an urban environment, um, you know, there's this apparent randomness and chaos, but underneath there's this pattern and there's this order, and I think that's that tension that's particularly interesting um, and interesting to me. And, um, you know, with something like this, this sort of weathered chair, um, and you've seen in a lot of interior design um, in the last 10 years, a sort of contrast and tension between old, weathered, aged things and, you know, the sort of more uh, modernist, sleek things. So um, wabi-sabi is something that I came across kind of in the last few years and I read an article and I thought, aha, this is perfect. This is an articulation of what I'll even kind of rattling around in my brain. Um, so Wabi Sabi, very briefly, is, uh, as you see here, sort of the, the idea of a humble beauty. It's the idea that, um, you know, things are earthy and, and uh, incomplete, um, never finished, and, and it's that imperfection where, where beauty can be found. And so, um, again, that's something that I find particularly interesting and, and relevant to, to the work that I'm doing. So with things like, you know, this phase, there's this inconspicuous aspect to it that I find really interesting. Or in this example where you've got the material quality of, of the metal and, and, you know, it's natural materials. It's this idea of, I think the next slide is, well, I guess I shouldn't tell you the next slide. Um, but uh, it's, it's the idea that it's, it's the, those, those natural qualities coming through as sort of a quietness, I guess. And it's compared to something like, um, you know, modernism, which is polished and sleek. Wabi-sabi is, is kind of earthy and imperfect. It's in those, um, you know, observing those kind of things in the urban environment, um, for me anyway, I find particularly inspiring. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite things is this kind of idea of concrete, and then you can still see the, the wood part. And then in, in this um, image, I was traveling in the Bay of Fundy and um, saw this shed, and I got really excited because, um, again, it's this, this peeling paint, which is great, and up close it's very random and chaotic, but, of course, it has that uh, vertical, um, or sorry, horizontal, you know, lines of the wood, which creates that really great structure and order, but at the same time, there's this great tension between the two, and so, um, so then use this, and I thought, well, this would be a great idea for a textile, and that's what I um, spend a lot of my time doing, is, is thinking up of interesting ideas for, for textiles. So I took that idea, and then uh, similarly, the same kind of thing, you know, walking through the city, and, and I think this was also in L.A., um, just happened to look down in the concrete, which probably was pristine at some point, um, had become weathered and kind of mossy, and, and uh, so the sort of trowel of the, the concrete, again, kind of creates this really interesting pattern, 
which I thought, again, would be awesome as a text docs. Ta-da! So then um, I created, uh, and, and you know, one of the things that I, that I love about this too is that you know it's not perfect. So I'm using linen, which is naturally kind of very raw and rough, and even in the the, the printing I'm doing, um, it's not perfect. You know, and that's okay. And when it is imperfect, even better in my book. Um, and then, um, sort of as my work's been evolving, um, this is uh, taken in Montreal. I love seeing you know, these big sides of old buildings, and they, to me, remind me of abstract paintings. Um, so my work sort of evolved into this kind of area of thinking about textiles in a more abstract, slightly less kind of pattern order kind of way. Um, and so then I've taken those and then created uh, these, uh, these textiles, which are a bit more like abstract paintings, as I said. And, and uh, using kind of simple color palettes and, and created this, this bench to, uh, to kind of illustrate this idea. So it's continually this sort of search and, and fascination with this sort of order and chaos. And um, so basically the idea is that um, anywhere you are, you can coax uh, beauty out of ugliness, essentially.